The first to the race riots in the United States, there's something very sick going on here. And for us, there is a warning too. And speaking of warnings, I will be showing you some very confronting footage. Now, let's first understand exactly what's going on here and why. Because so much of what you're being told by the media are untruths or half-truths. Journalists are telling you lies even when you can see the truth written in the flames behind them. I, I, I want to be clear in how I characterize this. This is a, mostly a protest. Uh, it, is not, uh, it is not, generally speaking, unruly. You are being told untruths by journalists of the left, like this CNN reporter excusing the protesters, telling you, no, there's no violence, or not really, even when you see bottles being thrown at him. It is worth pointing out that it has been entirely peaceful. When others saw them doing the graffiti, they would shut them down. They would stop doing it. Bottle thrown, uh, which is not uncommon. Uh, so there is some of that, but for the most part, they have been very, very peaceful. Uh, they haven't, uh, they haven't been destroying anything. They, they, they like to take it out of the media, as everybody does. But rather than, you know, yell at us and and, and throw stuff at us, not in a in a mean way. And then when the supposedly non-violent protesters trash that CNN reporter's own headquarters in Atlanta and pose on the CNN sign with flags of the new race politics that's now tearing America apart, you get a correspondent from our ABC hinting that this might actually be the work of Trump supporters who are behind this mayhem. In Atlanta, CNN headquarters was attacked. The news network is despised by Trump supporters. <laughs> What utter nonsense. This is the left at work. Here we are seeing the anarchy and the hate police rhetoric and the race warfare that the left have preached for so long. Yet so many in the media are trying to hide from you the toxic results. So let me try to explode some of the falsehoods, give you the facts. First, you must make sure you understand this is not an either or. You do not have to pick one of two sides. All of us can and should be shocked by what happened when four police officers in Minneapolis arrested George Floyd. A man with a police record was suspected of passing a fake $20 note. It was shocking, absolutely shocking, to see a police officer hold Floyd down for nine minutes with his knee on Floyd's neck. Please, please. Ah, I can't breathe. Nine minutes that knee was on Floyd's neck, and for the last three minutes, Floyd was not moving. That was last Monday. But all of us can equally be shocked by what followed. Riots all over America, cars and buildings burned, shops looted, police attacked, people bashed in violence so serious that more than 40 cities have now imposed curfews to restore order, as President Donald Trump pleaded for calm. The death of George Floyd on the streets of Minneapolis was a grave tragedy. It should never have happened. It has filled Americans all over the country with horror, anger, and grief. I stand before you as a friend and ally to every American seeking justice and peace. And I stand before you in firm opposition to anyone exploiting this tragedy to loot, rob, attack, and menace. We support the right of peaceful protesters, and we hear their pleas. But what we are now seeing on the streets of our cities has nothing to do with justice or with peace. The memory of George Floyd is being dishonored by rioters, looters, and anarchists. The violence and vandalism is being led by Antifa and other radical left-wing groups. But let's now take you through some of the claims that must be questioned. First, everyone agrees that the police officer with his knee on Floyd's neck acted appallingly. I'm glad has now been charged with third-degree murder. And let us see what the courts decide. 
But was this what so many people insist? Was it murder? Well, maybe, maybe. But the local medical examiner said he found no evidence of Floyd's body to support a diagnosis of strangulation. He said Floyd had underlying heart troubles and potential intoxicants in his body that likely contributed to his death. Doesn't excuse what happened. Not at all. We're not picking sides here. This is not, you know, that's bad or this is bad. Both is bad, are bad. Second, was Floyd the victim of racism? Now, myself, I doubt that a police officer would have treated a white man that way. That said, helping him to hold Floyd down was an Asian officer. And US cops have also killed a white man in virtually the same way. Tony Timper, four years ago. So now he's like rolling, 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 no rights then. In fact, US cops last year killed far more whites than blacks, 370 of them. Although it is true that when you adjust for population, blacks being just 13% of the population, blacks are nearly three times more likely to be shot by police than are whites. But even that does not still tell you the full story. You've actually got to take into account, surely, how often police are likely to find themselves in a situation where their guns may have to be used. And here is one measure. African-Americans commit more murders than whites. Adjust that for population. And blacks are four times more likely to be jailed for murder. So to dismiss police shootings of blacks in the US as evidence of racism is a little too neat, too simplistic and far too easy. There are wider cultural factors at play here, including not just the dreadful legacy of slavery, but aspects of black culture today, the kinds of cultural forces explored by black intellectual Thomas Sowell in his superb book, Black Rednecks and White Liberals. But why then these massive riots? Well, of course, some of it's genuine anger about what was done to George Floyd. I'm angry. A lot of it, though, is politics, using Floyd as a symbol, an excuse. It's a kind of racism. Now this white police officer's symbol of all whites, of all police. Now, we're told that the protesters want justice for Floyd. Well, they don't give justice a chance. The officer with his knee on Floyd's neck, he was charged on Friday with murder. So what more do these protesters want? What specifically is the demand that authorities can give in to? In fact, some of the protesters seem to be more interested in a moral performance. People are using this opportunity to show their supposed goodness, their superior morality. They are not interested in justice for Floyd. They're interested in seeming good. They're not interested in the facts. They're not interested in waiting to see what justice actually does in this case. They want what happened to him cut and dried. That's it. Shocking. And now here's my performance. And that's one reason why so many of the people arrested are actually white. Other protesters, also mainly white, are leftist radicals or Antifa street fighters who hate capitalism, hate police, and have used this excuse to wage their revolution, symbolised by all those burning police cars everywhere. They even burned down the police headquarters of the officer who arrested Floyd. Then there are also the activists, including politicians, who are using this as a weapon against Donald Trump, to bring him down. They're blaming him, which is why even the White House was attacked. In fact, of course, Donald Trump has nothing to do with this. The police force that actually killed Floyd is led by a black commander in a city whose mayor is a young Democrat, in a state with a Democrat governor, and an attorney general so radically left-wing that he has promoted Antifa, as does his son. And then there's the looters of 
Of course, we've grabbed this chance to take so much free stuff. And again, the excuses made for them. Like we heard from a professor of black studies in America on Sky News today. These protests are taking place in the midst of a pandemic with unemployment skyrocketing to levels that have not been seen in this country for 80 years. So it would not surprise me at all if what is called, quote, looting, unquote, is taking place on behalf of certain protesters. Seriously, this looting, unquote, is just by desperately poor blacks and not just criminals and freeloaders and greedy whites as well, lining up even to loot a shop specialising in hiking and mountaineering equipment. Doesn't look like very desperate. Look, they're not stealing food, let me tell you that. And how do we explain also the burning down of a library, of a Native American centre, of a Wendy's shop, or of a block of affordable housing for the poor? What's the excuse for that? The veneer of civilization we see again is so very thin. This is Lord of the Flies stuff, only it's for real and writ very large. This is what happens when race politics picks up on a tragedy and makes it into a bigger, more explosive, performative excuse. They weaponize it, and the enemies of civilization are joining in. Truth then becomes the enemy. None of us are safe. It is an anarchy and a revolution that eats even its own. Black areas were the worst hit by these riots. And those people who make the excuses for it, who impose their ideology on the events to excuse the chaos, usually do so from the safety of their very nice suburbs. And that changes so fast. And the first smell of smoke. You take longtime NBA reporter Chris Palmer. He tweeted, burn it all down at seeing an apartment block on fire. But you check his tweet on the right. When the rioters suddenly came near to his nice gated community, suddenly a different story. He, he tweeted, they just attacked our sister community down the street. They tried to climb the gates. They had to beat them back. They destroyed a Starbucks. And now they're in front of my building. Get these animals, TF, out of my neighbourhood. These animals suddenly. You support what you see playing out in America and you're playing with fire. And so many of the, the activists here too have played for years with that same race fire. Here on our ABC. Up, Buzz. Whitey. <laughs> on your colonisation. Oh, it. It. Burn this place to the ground! I think violence is okay because, like, we, if someone's trying to kill you, you know, there's no amount of, oh, but I'm really clever, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm really articulate. Um, no amount of that is going to save you. So, I, yeah, mm. it's I a think tricky, really let's burn stuff. Well, now we know what it looks like when stuff gets burned when the police are beaten, when authority is destroyed and when race politics is king.